You'll be pleased to know when it comes to protecting our country, I often say we have the best intelligence services in the world. It's not like when people go, oh yeah, our NHS, everyone the world over is envious of that, our NHS is brilliant. No, they're not. It's rubbish. Um, if it worked, it wouldn't be, but alas, it is. Um, yet I do think that when you look at the amount of terror threats being thwarted by our intelligence services, I think there's around 40 since 2017, which were in the late stage, as in about to, you know, create mass, casual, casual, mass casualty events, um, then at least they are ahead of the game. Um, and you'll be pleased to know then that Jonathan Powell, he was previously Downing Street Chief of Staff under Sir Tony Blair, is about to take on a key role next month that is right he is going to be our new head of national security he is the country's new national security advisor so who is this man who's going to help us sleep safely in our beds at night well what i know about him because it's right here in the papers today is his wife is called sarah helm now she has been uh, busy tweeting away on x and in one post Ms. helm who is a journalist and an author she had a video of that lovely man Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. Remember, we didn't really care for him much back in the day, but never mind. Um, he was speaking at a recent Arab Islamic summit in Saudi Arabia. And she said, this is important. Assad is stepping up to the plate. Go on, Bashar. Uh, according to a translated version of his speech, which was shared by Ms. Helm, a wife of our new national security advisor, he branded Israel an outlaw colonial entity. We are not dealing with people in the civilised sense, but rather with herds of settlers that are closer to barbarism than to humanity, he added. Uh, Assad also claimed Israel was afflicted with schizophrenia between hating Nazism abstractly and loving it as an organic part of itself in practice. In a previous social media post, Ms Helm accused Israel herself of pursuing ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. So I think we know where his wife stands when it comes to matters in the Middle East, but should we be concerned? Let's speak now to Dr. Bob Seeley, former Conservative MP and military expert. Bob, great to have you on the programme. I was speaking to Sir Richard Dearlove last Friday and and I asked him about uh, the appointment of Jonathan Powell because, of course, they work together. Sir Richard Dearlove, um, former head of intelligence in uh, uh, Sir Tony Blair's era, and without saying many words, that the height of his eyebrows touching his hairline uh, told me all that I needed to know. Should we be concerned by, let's say, his wife's seeming um, allegiances and ideology? Or is, is it just a case of, well, that's one thing. His wife said something on social media. That's of no importance. Um, hi, Alex. Um, I mean, look, Sarah Helm has the right to have her own opinions. I think, it's a, I think it's a little embarrassing for him. But the idea that she's not allowed to have opinions and she has to echo her, whatever her husband believes, uh, you know, we don't, we don't live in that day and age. So I think it's embarrassing for him, but she's welcome to her own opinions. I think my problem with Jonathan Powell is that he's 20 years behind the times. Um, and what he said on the Chagos Islands, I thought, was absolutely appalling. He said words to the effect of, nobody really visits these islands, so they're not terribly important. Chagos Islands aren't a tourist trap. They're not a tourist destination. They happen to house a very geostrategically important uh, base at Diego Garcia. And for him not to realise that and not to see a potential Chinese threat, not to see this in geopolitical terms, I think shows somebody who is maybe 10, 15, 20 years behind the times, doesn't quite realise the new era of the rise of authoritarianism that we're living in. Um, and that, that actually worries me much more than um, any slightly off colour or, you know, you, know, you can like him or not, um, um, uh, the tweets of his missus. I, I mean, look, I, I'm with you in the, when it comes to sort of free speech and people should be able to say what they want if only we could do that more in this country. But when you're mm. national security advisor, I don't know, to me that that is, that is beyond being, you know, a bloke who's an MP or a bloke who works yeah. in Tesco or a bloke who writes for a newspaper. He's going to be there directly advising the government on what to do when it comes to matters taking place in the Middle East. And very often you, you would make an assumption that when people have such strident views, 
on issues like this because, you know, Israel is more than just a geopolitical issue mm -hmm. in the UK. It's become a cultural issue, a bit like Brexit. Yep. That one could yep. imagine that that might sort of reflect a little bit on how he might think about things, which gives me a, a, a degree of cause for alarm. I want to know now where Jonathan Powell stands on who he thinks our allies are over in the Middle East. Uh, again, I think that is a fair look. That, I think that's a fair point because, as you say, couples tend to have the same opinions. If he is rapidly anti-Israeli, I don't think a that's going to sit very well with our senior allies, the Americans, and I don't think it's going to sit well with many other people. It may sit well with some people in the Middle East and with pro-Palestinian groups. So, you know, you're right to say that. But again, I'm just wary of criticising Sarah Helm for having opinions. She was a journalist, um, and journalists tend to have strong opinions and voice them. I mean, my problem with Jonathan Powell, I just think he is... Uh, he doesn't see the world as it is. And it may be that the Middle East is actually part and parcel of that of that failure to see the world as it is. But if you don't see the rise of authoritarian uh, regimes as a significant threat, if you don't see China as a significant threat, then I think you have a problem. Um, and my worry, I mean, I'll give you an example. I was in the Middle East about two, three years ago now, uh, and I was listening to a former national security advisor, and we were in Bahrain. And Bahrain has Iranian missiles pointed at it at the time the Russians were putting all their, their army around Ukraine about to invade. You know, the Chinese were doing, the Chinese Communist Party were doing really bad things to the Uyghurs and were sort of flexing their muscles in the South China Sea. And you have our national security advisor standing up in front of the great and good in the Middle East and say the number one problem in the world is climate change. I just think that too many people, too many senior people in our establishment in Downing Street and elsewhere, and this was happening under us as well, uh, whether they're related and deal with security or not, I think they are living in, a, in a, an ideologically driven world that actually is sometimes unrelated to what is actually happening in the world. With great respect, climate change is an issue to be managed, but it is not the ac apocalyptic disaster that people are trying to claim, or that some, most of the rest of the world is cottoned onto this. But when you have our senior people saying that the world, you know, that well, it, despite the weekly threats of nuclear war coming out of Russia, when people are saying that, oh, the most important thing in the world is climate change, I I'm sorry, I, I sometimes think our elite classes have gone a bit doolally. Yeah, well, do you know what, you say it's unrelated, but I think you probably agree with me on this one, that we know in time Times past, um, Russian operatives have infiltrated the green movement uh, in oh, order yeah. to try and use this to make us not energy self-sufficient. So we buy their gas and probably economically cripple ourselves. I'm pretty sure that China <laughs> thinks us going hell for leather for net zero is really good for them as well. So I wonder oh, sure, how unrelated sure. it is. In fact, I'd imagine a lot of the net zero well, push is coming with a little bit of aid and abetting from uh, people who don't like us. Okay. Just, Alex, two things on that. Firstly, the Chagos operation was undoubtedly manipulated by the Russians. And I think the evidence is going to come out eventually, uh, and it would be great to have that evidence, because I think that Lamy et al. were victims of, in part, a Russian influence operation. Oh, tell um, me more. In what way? Oh, because the Russians were manipulated. You talk to various people from various security agencies in Europe, uh, and they are quite clear that the Russians were manipulating th um, developing world opinion to pressure the Brits uh, over the Chagos Islands. It is in part, it was in part a Russian influence operation. I think there, the evidence, I hope, will, will eventually come out, and I think that in my mind there is actually very little doubt that that was the case. And secondly, when you're talking about um, green movements, you're absolutely right. Gazprom absolutely critical to Putin's plans to control pretty much, you know, everything he can. Um, Gazprom were, uh, were funding anti-fracking movements in Ukraine and Eastern Europe um, because it was there in their interest to make sure there wasn't an alternative uh, to Russian gas and Russian oil production, uh, oil refineries, etc. So uh, absolutely that the green movement has at times been been manipulated. And I think when it comes to Chagos and Diego Garcia, I think we were played in part by the Russians. Well, that is really fascinating stuff. Listen, Bob, when uh, that does come out, and let's keep pushing uh, to make sure it does come out, please come and join us again. Because, um, you know, I tell you what, uh, people often say, you know, white privilege, what's all that about? White privilege is being woke, particularly one assumes if you work in the Kremlin, i.e. you use it against the West, you condemn the West for being woke, but you use it to your advantage. So we tie ourselves up in a Gordian knot of economic inefficiency and self-hatred.